Hello and welcome to the first edition of Jumbo Connections. I'm Paul Sweeney, Tufts University's Director of Athletic Communications. With Jumbo Connections, we are trying to bring together current student athletes with alumni of Tufts University sports teams and have them chat about their experiences at Tufts and beyond. We're pleased today to be joined by Jumbos from the Women's Tennis Program, current sophomore Tilly Rigby, and 2010 Tufts graduate Laura Hoge Leonard. Guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Having us. Let's start with introductions. If you could both take a minute to let us know a little bit about you, starting with you, Laura. Hi, I'm Laura. I currently live in Denver, Colorado. I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, attended Tufts, graduated in 2010 as a uh, child development and community health major and or double major, majored in community health and child development. And then I stayed on for a fifth year and got my master's in teaching and actually helped out with coach Kate and uh, the tennis team in my fifth year. I'm Tilly, I'm a sophomore. I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I'm majoring. I just declared my major in computer science and I think I'm minoring in math. So how'd you guys both get started in the sport of tennis and why has it become such a big part of your life? Laura? Um, so I started with tennis, I think because it was really popular in my family. A lot of family members played it, uh, but I definitely attribute to sticking with tennis and wanting to pursue it in college because of my coaches uh, in middle school when I was deciding what sport to play in the fall. Um, between soccer and tennis, it was my middle school coach who really made me uh, kind of see the, the love I had for the game and made me want to continue pursuing it. And then my high school coach who really um, helped me get excited about it. And it was really the coaches who kept me in the game and kept me motivated to keep getting better and coach at uh, Tufts as well. So Let's say it started with family and then turned into uh, for the coaches and my teammates. Yeah, I started, I just played all sports when I was younger. And then I actually got into competitive gymnastics and tennis at the same time. And my parents made me choose one because the driving was a bit chaotic. <laughs> and I was actually leaning towards gymnastics. And then some persuasion from my parents <laughs> led me to tennis and I mean, obviously I'm happy I stick with it. I think, I think just, I'm like a naturally competitive person and tennis, I like made so many good friends, like also through tournaments that I just wanted to stick with it. And then, yeah, ended up at Tufts. Yeah, did either of you have a professional player who either influenced you or who you think you play like? I'm pretty, I don't think I play like anyone. I'm pretty defensive naturally I would say like I like to just scramble and I run down every ball but I would say when I started playing my older brother also played so I would just kind of copy him for a bit can you beat him now Tilly yeah he like doesn't play any sports now so <laughs> hopefully I can beat him <laughs> Yeah, I don't think a professional really inspired me necessarily in terms of my play or my style. I think I, I just enjoyed watching them, but yeah. So what were the paths that you guys took to Tufts, Tilly? Um, I, when I was looking at schools, no one from my high school really went to the U.S. So I guess it was, I was just, it was up to me to research everything. And I knew, I actually didn't consider playing division three until I like laid out all the, I just looked at schools totally from an academic standpoint first. And then kind of when I like looked at tennis too, Tufts just seemed the best fit. Like NESCAC is obviously a super competitive conference. So I could get like really good level competition and then nothing was sacrificed with my academics. Yeah. It's awesome. Coach is lucky to have you, Tilly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I feel like I came to Tufts actually not through tennis. I was a walk-on for tennis um, and so fortunate to have been able to be a walk-on, but I was really excited about Tufts for some of the academic pieces like child development, but I think really the tour is what sold me um, the warm community, the friendliness, the 
just uh, the care for each other. And, um, and that is really what sold me. It was really evident that the minute I stepped on campus and, um, and I got excited about the school and kind of prayed that tennis would work out. So uh, yeah. I actually, I did a couple of visits in like one week at different schools and the only, it was like amazing weather, like every visit, except for when I went to Tufts, it was like pouring down with rain. And like my whole campus tour, I was like, I didn't bring an umbrella. I was like trying to hide like underneath other people's umbrellas. And I still love the campus, like without it being in nice weather and everything. That's when you know it's really good, right, Tilly? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Talk a little bit about your academic pursuits. Uh, Tilly, I know you're a sophomore and you've taken uh, most of your classes, uh, have they been online or have they been in person? I know we're dealing with the pandemic, but uh, both of you could talk about your academic pursuits. I actually I actually totally switched once I came to Tufts, which I think is an added benefit to like Tufts flexible, flexible courses. Um, I came in thinking I was going to major in biomedical engineering. And then I took like, I took those like five shoe bio classes. And then I ended up taking computer science in the spring introduction to computer science, never coded before, thought I would hate it. I was like convinced I would hate it. And then I had bio and computer science like right after each other, all my exams were in the same week. And I would just like dread studying for bio and I'd be so motivated to do all my like coding problems. So <laughs> I decided it would probably be better if I switched and so I'm only in, well, I did the introduction course in the spring and then all of my classes this semester were pretty science and, or computer science and math focused, but they're mostly online. So it's definitely different learning online, but I think like, I think everyone's in the same boat and the, the teachers have done a great job to make it like as interactive as possible. So still liking it. <laughs> It's a great attitude. Uh, I'm kind of on the other end of things right now in the pandemic because I am a teacher. I teach in Denver Public Schools. I'm a middle school teacher. And so I am teaching online, um, have been since August. So uh, Tilly, I hope my students are as a uh, warm and accepting <laughs> of us having to teach online. But uh, yeah, it's been great. And so I studied child development and community health and then got my master's in teaching at Tufts. And um, I definitely had a couple of professors who helped really solidify my interest in going into teaching, um, like Steve Cohen and Professor Lerner. They were two who really helped me. Uh, and I still rely on for, for kind of career advice and whatnot. But um, yeah, Tufts really, and, and I would say my experiences at Tufts really helped me get interested in middle school. And, um, and then I went on to Somerville Public Schools for a couple of years before moving out to Denver. So it was great to be in in the jumbo community for a while. Is there a specific class or subject that you teach? Yeah, so this year I'm actually teaching social studies, uh, but I also have taught PE. I'm, um, and I'm in a hybrid role. So I teach half of the day and half of the day I coach teachers um, and run the social studies department, uh, which is really fun. Uh, this year I was supposed to be teaching PE and running the social studies department like I've normally done, but then someone quit the week before school started because it's just that kind of a year yeah. so I'm back into sixth grade social studies this year um but yeah kind of this is one of those years that teachers just do whatever you need to do and people are doing all sorts of things taking care of their family and their jobs right. and yeah you just do what it takes so um yeah. social studies and PE I, ha I haven't dabbled in anything else although I did want to teach math at one point and ended up not but yeah do either of you have a particular favorite class that you took or are have taken at Tufts? Um, aside from Introduction to Computer Science Comp 11, which I really enjoyed, I actually really liked um, Intro Psych with Sam Somers. I just thought it was so, like I could apply it in, it was almost like common sense, but then you're learning so much more and I, it just, I could apply it in like every aspect of my life. And I was just super engaged every class. So I like that. 
That's awesome. I wish I had taken that class. A lot of my friends loved that class as well, so, but I didn't. Um, I mentioned Steve Cohen and um, Professor Lerner, and they were definitely two of my favorite professors, and I pretty much took every class I could with them. Uh, I loved doing, we did a lot of site visits of schools and meeting with different like professionals and experts in the field. And that was my favorite part of all of their classes is just kind of getting out and for me getting into schools and interacting with kids uh, was really fun and got me excited about my future career. What's your favorite part about playing tennis at Tufts? Whether it's a favorite memory, a team, a uh, tradition? Or... Probably for me, I think just the team aspect of our team this or since I've been on it at least has been really, really close. Like the team is my best friends on at Tufts. And it's just so nice to go from juniors, which is like you're largely playing by yourself and it's individual to having like 12 girls like supporting you and cheering you on. Even the coaches like in both on the court and off the court, they just like, they, I think everyone knows everything about me on the team and they're like, so supportive with everything. Yeah, it's like a little like a Tufts family. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Chili, and I'm old and have been gone a while, but I, I would say pretty much the same thing. Um, and there are a group of us who still get together from the tennis team, and we've actually had two gatherings canceled since COVID, one when our teammate Julia Brown, um, who Tilly probably knows from last yeah. spring, she was helping out. She was um, injected into the Hall of Fame, but the trip was canceled because of COVID, um, but we still, there are about six or seven of us and we still get together. Um, we're all over the U.S. and in London and uh, we get together on Zoom. So since COVID, we've, it's been nice actually, it's, it's uh, kind of forced us to maybe talk more on Zoom because we don't have trips planned to see each other. Uh, yeah. So that's been really fun and it's just inspiring. I mean, the girls my teammates inspired me so much in college. I learned so much from them. We all brought such different passions and interest areas into tennis. Cause as we all know at Tufts, it's not just about being a student and an athlete. Like everyone always has some other passion project. And I think that's one of the best parts about Tufts, but uh, it's still true today. Like I, I talked to my friends from the team and they're all just doing such uh, inspiring and impressive things. And I just, I learn from them every time I talk to them. Uh, so still, I would say still holds true as um, something that, that is still a major part of my life. Yeah, I guess I, I was remote in the fall semester. And so I didn't see, like, I haven't seen the team since March pretty much. And I talked, I like talked to everyone on the team almost daily. And we still have so many things to talk about, even though I'm on lockdown. Like there's not much, that many interesting things happening to me right now, but we have like really good conversations every day still. That's awesome. Also, I would say um, like, I didn't have, I haven't had a spring season yet, but in the fall, oh gosh, we, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'll be having many years of eligibility. Um, but I think when we traveled in the fall, like even just staying overnight at all the places, like it was just so much fun. You just like the bus rides, like we would go out for dinner, like staying in people's hotel rooms. Like it was just so much fun. Like, and you bond so much more, I think. For in sure. In terms of NCAA appearances, uh, women's tennis is one of, is the most successful Tufts team. I mean, Coach Bayard has led the team to something like 17 NCAA appearances and 18 seasons. And what can you tell me about Coach? Um, I'll let uh, go first. Okay. Um, something I actually really loved about how coach runs the program is that all the practices are so like, they're very structured and like every practice has a purpose. And like, we're, we know she sets the expectations, like right at the beginning of the year, like we work really hard in practices and like when the drills are going on, but then like, she's still at, like, we have so much fun after each drill. Like when we're just taking all our water breaks, like we're all laughing, she's laughing with us. And then, I think it's a combination of her, I guess she values a lot of like work ethic and then also a good team chemistry. Like she knows how important that is. And I think she really tries to foster that environment where it's like, you're working so hard on the court, but then you're having like so much fun off the court too. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think coaches I've learned and, you know, I don't know that I, I really maybe saw it in the day to day, but now having some, um, you know, time to reflect, I think coach is one of the most sincere and loyal people. She, um, you may not always know it, but she is always playing mama bear behind the scenes and she always goes to bat for you. And I know um, when I was helping out in my fifth year, I just, she always was advocating for players, putting them up for awards. Like she's, she just, she cares so much about each of her girls and knows them in and out. Uh, and as Tilly said, she's such an expert in the area. She's such a beautiful player. She really knows her stuff. Uh, and I, um, up until I started having children, I was coaching uh, high school and I found myself continuing to do the same exact drills coach did or saying the same, you know, isms that coach has. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I remember I'd text her or call her and be like, coach, like she taught me so much that is just innate in all of us. I mean, I, when we get together as alums and we play tennis, we always joke, but we're always doing the things that coach had us doing that we hated or that we like dreaded and, um, and now it's just something that uh, she always knew what was best, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And she definitely does always check in with us. Like mm -hmm. even, even now that none of us are on campus, at least for Christmas and a lot of last spring, like she would text us all like both individually and in our team group chat and just like making sure anything's okay. Everything's okay. And like asking if anyone just like wants to talk just to check in, say hi. So, yeah. That's coach. Yeah. <laughs> So besides playing tennis and your academic studies, tell me something that you love about Tufts that isn't associated with those two. I would say, I would just say the people, like everyone's so different. Even I actually, the building that I lived in, in the fall, like I didn't, I think we, I roomed with athletes, someone on the field hockey team and on the rowing team. And then the rest of our floor, none of them were athletes. And I just met, so even just in my, in and out of my building, I just met so many people through my classes. None of them were majoring what I was doing. Like none of them were on the tennis team. Like half of them weren't athletes. And I just like found something interesting about everyone I met. And it's a small enough campus that like you run into familiar faces and like have like a conversation, like going to class, but then you're also just meeting new people all the time still. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I like have flashbacks. I remember when recruits would come and we'd stand in a circle. I don't know if coach still does this. She'd be like, what's your, like, who are you? What's your favorite part about Tufts? Yeah. And I feel like we all had similar things to say just about kind of what you were just saying, Tilly, like everyone brings something different to the table. And that's, what's so cool about Tufts is I feel like in my four years, obviously I grew as a player, obviously I grew as a student, but I think most importantly, I grew as a person and as like a citizen and just being informed in the world. And I, uh, I really just value Tufts for broadening my horizons in more ways than I ever thought possible. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Even if you just go to the campus center or now at least like the Tufts like Facebook groups, there's people posting like my grade or freshmen who were like, they're doing like these amazing things or organizing like volunteer events or just like educating people like about voting, like things you can do for the environment. And it's just like, there are really smart people at Tufts, <laughs> like not even just academically, just with knowledge about little things that you can learn so much from. Yeah. Okay, time for the important stuff. Do you prefer DeWick or Carmichael Dining Hall? And what was your favorite meal? Mm. Um, oh, I actually discovered the best balance of both last year. I, <laughs> I Tell live, me about it. <laughs> I live, it's a very important debate. I live right next to DeWick and that's better for lunch and dinner. But breakfast, I only discovered later in the semester. They have fresh berries every day at Carm. So I would make my way up to the hill every day just for the fresh berries. And breakfast was my favorite meal of the day. Wow. I think at least when I was there, Carmichael opened earlier. I don't know if that is oh. still true. I was an early bird. So I liked Carmichael. I also lived uphill freshman year, but all of our team meals were always at DeWick. And so yeah. I feel like I ended up liking DeWick more because not for convenience, but because that's definitely where I have the most 
fun memories, especially with the team. We did so many team meals together, um, even as a senior, which was great. I miss the dining hall a lot. There's nothing better than those team meals together at the table. Uh, I don't know what my favorite meal is. Gosh, I wish I could go back to the dining <laughs> hall. I mean, Tilly, you might have to swipe me in one of these days. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, actually, we would always practice from like three to five or three to five thirty in the fall. And we would go to each at Duix every day. And then I came home at Christmas time and we don't usually eat till seven o'clock and I'd be starving at five because the whole semester I'd have, we'd had a team dinner at five, which yeah. is definitely early. And, but yeah, we just had so many good memories in the dining hall, just eating. And before games, we would mm -hmm. have matches or when we would travel, we would always have breakfast. Yeah. Let's go off the board for a question here. Tilly, if you were playing Laura, you know nothing about her as a player, how would you approach the match? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, probably how I do every match. I mean, I mentioned it before, but I just like, I'm pretty good on the run and I'm, I like to stay consistent. So I think I would just try and play my game and I have no idea how Laura plays. <laughs> so see what she does and if need be, I can, I can run. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, what would be your plan of attack? I don't know. I think running is always and getting to every ball and a little bit on the defense is definitely my thing too, but I also like coming to the net. So I guess that's a little bit in contrast. Uh, so I don't know. Sounds like Tilly, it sounds like we'd have fun at conditioning together too. Those yeah, are my favorite yeah. days. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I started coming to the net a lot since that was probably the biggest change since I got to Tufts. Just and coach is really good at teaching doubles yeah. and coming to the net. That's like, yeah, I actually days. really, I really enjoyed doubles. Actually my doubles partner for most of the fall was on my official visit. We like visited Tufts at the same time. And like we were, became friends on our official visit and now we're playing doubles together. That's awesome. Did, is that why you came to Tufts? I mean, I, I actually had four girls on my, I actually had a really good official visit. There was four recruits and I like met the whole team and we just had so much fun. I was, I was pretty much set on Tufts anyway by then, but <laughs> it was a nice bonus. Yeah. <laughs> so let's wrap up by saying happy new year to both of you. And what are your hopes, both of you for 2021? Um, As we're still in a pandemic, maybe not a fair question, but uh, what are your hopes for 2021? Probably for me just to get back to campus and see everyone. I mean, I'm hoping obviously this semester will still be very different and likely the fall of next year too. But I think maybe we'll have, a, maybe we'll have, maybe I'll get my first spring season next year. Um, so you never know. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I think I, I feel for you, Tilly, and the girls on the team. And I just hope that, you know, I know that you will make the most of it when the season comes your way, whether it's, I don't know, next fall, spring, who knows. But um, I, I get excited thinking about what you have to experience and what you have ahead of you and spring break trips and all that comes with that. Um, I mean, personally, I can't wait to see my students in person. Uh, and yeah, I just, um, I'm really, really looking forward to taking true advantage of the things that maybe I took for granted, mm -hmm. like being with my tough friends who live in different states. And uh, when we have, when we had those opportunities in the past, I just can't wait to embrace them and um, get back to some of that uh, in-person normalcy. Yeah, I think a lot of people will take less things for granted and just like appreciate like the littlest of things once everything goes back to yeah. normal. That's so true. But as coach always says, control the controllables, right? Yeah. I think about that mantra all the time. <laughs> and uh, so we will control what we have right now, right? Yeah. Well, thanks to both of you so much for joining us. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for having us. This has been Jumbo Connections with women's tennis Tilly Rigby and Laura Hoge Leonard. Thanks for watching. <laughs>